Rafikra Hill University, Tehradun, School of Pharmacy presents this session for medicinal chemistry. Today, we will continue with the antipsychotics drugs under the drug acting on central nervous system. I am Associate Professor Dr. Ahmad Nawaz Khan from School of Pharmacy. In the previous class, part B2, we have discussed number of phenothiazine antipsychotic drugs like chlorpromazine that we have done the synthesis of the chlorpromazine and we discussed some of the properties of chlorpromazine along with its uses which is used in the management of psychotic condition. This uh, chlorpromazine is also used to control the excitement, aggression and agitation. For prochlorperazine, -chlor it is used as an anti-emetic drug and also in the schizophrenia patient and to control the mania involution psychosis and senile psychosis. Promazine, which is also a phenothiazine derivative, so it is used as an antipsychotic uh, drug and it controls the nausea and vomiting also. Now let us discuss the another type of antipsychotic drug. Now thiothexine. This thiothexine is a uh, See that this is the phenothiazine moiety, but it is that it is little. Uh, there is a little difference between phenothiazine and this thiothexine. See that uh, in phenothiazine it was uh, the nitrogen on the tenth position. However, there is no nitrogen on the tenth position, and the piperidine is the same uh, like in number of phenothiazine moiety. And but on the second position there is a sulfonamide group. So this is how the structure it looks like the phenothiazine, but it is a little different. And it is distributed in, into tissues and very important that the 90% of this drug is bound to the plasma protein. So that is a very good indication for the affinity. So thiothexine has a similar metabolic pathway uh, as the phenothiazine. Although it, it looks like very different uh, uh, moiety, a little different moiety but it has a similar metabolic pathway as the phenothiazine. So as with other antipsychotic uh, agents, those patients, those patients, those who are resistant to the previous medication, this is very favorably used. That means those patients who are resist to previous thiazine like chlorpromazine or fluphenazine. So these are, this is the thiothexine is the uh, favorably used. Thiothexine uh, may also be valuable uh, in the management of withdrawn apathetic schizophrenic patient showing or feeling no interest or enthusiasm or concern. This is also very important drug for the schizophrenia patient where they are apathetic. That means they are, they are not showing the any kind of symptoms or very they are they are concerned, they are non-interesting or uh, they are enthusiasm, they are no enthusiasm or no concern. So this thiazaxine is also used for those schizophrenia patients. So after uh, the phenothiazine antipsychotic drugs, there are more one more uh, category of the antipsychotic that is the butyrophenone and related structures. So this is the basic uh, skeleton of, uh, or we can say the pharmacophore, uh, the basic skeleton which is used to show the activity is known as the pharmacophore, which is responsible moiety for showing the action, affinity and the action. So this is the pharmacophore, and uh, of the butyrophenone and see that it looks like similar to the phenothiazine because there in the phenothiazine also the there three carbons are optimal for the activity of the antipsychotic activity of phenothiazine. So like uh, this is uh, the three carbon side chain of phenothiazine may be analogous may be analogous to the three carbon bridge this is the three carbon bridge that separate the amino function amino function from the carbonyl moiety this is the carbonyl moiety of the haloperidol because uh, the first compound which was uh, uh, which was researched uh, was the haloperidol and uh, this haloperidol was uh, uh, when it was discovered it was a byproduct basically and while investigating some analgesic structurally uh, related uh, compound and that was the mepiridine so during that uh, synthesis, synthesis uh, 
uh, investigation of mepiridine this was the by product haloperidol and uh, very interesting point about this that this behavior of this haloperidol is very uh, similar to the chlorpromazine but the required dose of haloperidol is 54 time less than the chlorpromazine to show the same uh, behavioral effect so that's why it was the first compound now uh, it is uh, known that a tertiary amino group at the fourth carbon tertiary amino group this is the tertiary amino group at the fourth carbon and the para substituted fluorine is preferred at the phenyl ring at position 1 are required for the dopamine 2 receptor affinity that means for binding the possible variation of the vitarophenon group are at the piperidine moiety in particular at the fourth position of the ring that means in this position the piperidine the possible variation is possible modification of lengthening shortening or branching of the three carbon profile chain decrease the neuroleptic property so if if there is any change in this uh, uh, carbon uh, carbon of uh, profile chain so then it will uh, decrease the neuroleptic activity as well as if uh, replacement of this keto group that is the carbonyl group also decrease the affinity however if we replaced it by uh, the you know, parafluoro phenyl group then it will be uh, not that much affected but it will affect the binding definitely it will affect the binding in this case so now let's see the haloperidol so this is the structure of the haloperidol and we have just uh, forget to discuss about the one of the uh, aromatic ring which is also required for the antipsychotic activity now this haloperidol this is the iupac name of the hal haloperidol and it is a orderless white to yellow crystalline powder and uh, it is well and rapidly absorbed it has very high bioavailability however during the first pass metabolism in the liver the bioavailability of the haloperidol is approximately 60 percent it remains only 60 percent so it goes extensively uh, under the metabolism including nd alkylation reduction oxidation and oxidation uh, i think you remember that we have uh, covered what is nd alkylation reduction oxidation and oxidation and uh, but the most of the metabolite of the hal haloperidol is are inactive now hydroxy haloperidol which is one of the uh, uh, the reduced ketone metabolite instead of uh, this uh, ketone group there will be a hydroxy group right that that is a one of the metabolite of haloperidol is the only active metabolite and it is also subject to extensive hepatic metabolism that means the the hydroxyl metabolite is the uh, one of the active form of the metabolite haloperidol uh, is used primarily for the long term treatment of the psychosis so it is used for the uh, long term treatment of the psychosis why because especially in those patient where who are non compliant with the other drug treatments so that's why this haloperidol is very important in those patient who are uh, non compliant to the other kind of other type of antipsychotic drugs now the next category of drug in this uh, vitarophenone now droperidol so droperidol this is the iupac name of the droperidol and this is the benzimidazolinone uh, derivatives comes under the vitarophenone related structure this is the structure of this droperidol so when this droperidol it uh, used in combination with some act, uh, acting centrally acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor it increase the risk of antipsychotic related eps eps is a common uh, side effect of the antipsychotic drugs so it it, it increase the risk of antipsychotic drug when used with acetylcholinesterase inhibitor so this is eps is extrapyramidal side effect that is the uh, that is the drug induced uh, disorder of movement which is one of the most common uh, adverse drug effect of the antipsychotics so 
Also, when this dopamineol is used, is some CNS depressant because this is dopamineol is antipsychotic drug. So, if the physician is using uh, the antipsychotic drug along with some CNS depressant, just like benzodiazepine, barbiturate, antipsychotic, ethanol, opiates, so they produce some additive sedative effect. Uh, this dopamineol it has highly sedative as well as uh, some CNS depressant. They also sedative that will provide give us additive. Dopamineol in combination with certain form of inhalation anesthetic also produce the peripheral vasodilation and hypotension. So it also should be remembered that this dopamineol when it used in combination in the anesthetic which are used in the form of inhalers. So then this dopamineol will cause the peripheral vasodilation and cause the hypotension. When there is a dilation, so that means the hypotension will occur. But important point is that because of its very short acting and highly sedating properties, short acting and highly sedating property, it is most frequently used in the combination with the, some narcotic agent like fentanyl uh, pre anesthetically means pre surgery. So pre anesthetically, uh, physician surgeons they are used this droparidol in combination with the narcotic agent fentanyl. It is also used as antiemetic. Now, a typical antipsychotic. So, after the butyrophenones and the phenothiazine, there is one more category, a typical antipsychotic. And these are the known as the second generation uh, antipsychotic drugs, just like flazapine, olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone, etc. And these, uh, with the development of these atypical antipsychotic drugs, just like flazapine, a clear division in the treatment outcome was observed. That means these are very predictable uh, outcomes uh, of this. Uh, you know, Atypical antipsychotic drugs. So, atypical antipsychotic they have generally shown to provide a greater reduction in both the positive and negative symptoms. So, just like the phenothiazine, which were work on the for the positive uh, symptoms, but this atypical antipsychotics they are work for the positive as well as the negative symptom of the schizophrenia, as well as an improvement in the cognitive functions. Now. The atypical antipsychotics are currently considered to be the first line treatment for the individual with schizophrenia. And because of this, because it, you, uh, it, it can be used uh, for the positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia, this is why this is the first line treatment of for the schizophrenia patient. Now, these at, uh, atypical antipsychotics, that they have an affinity to 5-hydroxytryptamine five, uh, five 2A receptor. What is this 5-hydroxy-2A receptors? They are the serotonin receptors, serotonin receptors, and they are found in the central and peripheral nervous system. Basically, these serotonin receptors they they uh, they mediate the both excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmission. And uh, this uh, serotonin, if you if if you remember, this serotonin it modulates the number of uh, neurotransmitters like uh, dopamine, acetylcholine, uh, etc. So. Uh, the, uh, this uh, apatipal antipsychotic they have affinity for 5 hydroxy tryptamine 2A receptor. There are number of subtypes of 5 hydroxy 5 HT receptor, 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptor, and this one is a very specific 2A. Is a feature of several of the recently developed atypical antipsychotic. Many researchers believe that the D2 receptor antagonism coupled with the 5 HT 2A receptor antagonism is responsible for the differentiation of effect observed with atypical antipsychotic. Which effect? This one. That means the anti the typical antipsychotic they work for positive as well as the negative and based on this uh, feature it is used for the uh, uh, first line treatment of the schizophrenia patient. Now the first compound is clozapine. So clozapine basically it contains the dibenzodiazepine. It's carried Look like phenothiazine, but it is dibenzodiazepine. It is a yellow crystalline powder that is only slightly soluble in water. Unlike the typical antipsychotic, clozapine is largely devoid of EPS. As we have uh, discussed earlier, that the antipsychotic drugs they cause the extrapyramidal side effect, but th that are typical antipsychotics. But these atypical antipsychotics they are devoid of the EPS, extrapyramidal side effects. The lack of the Extrapyramidal side effect with this compound was postulated to be caused by its preferential binding to the mesolimbic rather than the 
striatal dopaminergic receptor if you remember i have told you that there are the four pathways of dopaminergic receptor through which dopamine uh, it uh, act in the brain so these are the two pathways mesolimbic and the striatal clozapine was shown to exhibit the potent affinity for also 5 hydroxyl tryptamine to a receptor as we as we seen in the previous uh, slide and also because it does not affect the absorption of the food so clozapine may be given with or without the food so there is no necessary uh, condition for uh, the clozapine that it should always be given with the food because it does not uh, affect any absorption of the food so although clozapine demonstrate a favorable pharmacological profile compared with a typical antipsychotic it is used as restricted by a relatively high incidence of a granulocytosis but there is a problem over here that it cause the high incidence of a granulocytosis so what is a granulocytosis that means the lowered white blood cell count so when there were when there is a lowered uh, white blood cell count or uh, and mostly uh, most commonly the neutrophils so then it uh, that is a dangerous leukopenia basically dangerous leukopenia it is also known as uh, granulopenia so it causes the incidence of granulocytosis which is the lowered white blood cells especially the neutrophils now the exact mechanism although it act on the dna receptors and the 5hta receptors but the exact mechanism for the cause of the agranulocytosis has not been confirmed but a high highly reactive nitrinium ion that is formed by the action of hepatic enzyme appear to be involved but during the action of the hepatic enzyme uh, the nitrinium ion it, it is considered that highly reactive nitrinium ion is responsible for the causing this agranulocytosis that means lowering the number of the white blood cell count now one more category that is beta amino ketones so beta amino ketone is also used as antipsychotic drugs the uh, the one example is molybdenum hydrochloride so this is the uh, iupac name of molybdenum hydrochloride and this is the structure and this uh, this is an indole derivative basically which is effective in schizophrenia and other psychosis possibly useful in the treatment of aggressive type of under socialized conduct disorder the person who is very aggressive and uh, does not behave uh, good in in social gatherings and uh, that's why this molybdenum is used for that kind of patient molybdenum has much lower affinity for d2 receptor lower affinity to the d2 receptor and most antipsychotic agent than the most antipsychotic agent and has a relatively low affinity for d1 receptor also but for d2 it is much lower the exact mechanism has not been established however based on the electroencephalogram eeg study this molybdenum is thought to act by the occupying the antagonizing dopamine to receptor although it has a low affinity but uh, and uh, unknown uh, mechanism but based on the en uh, electroencephalogram eeg it shows that it occupy the d2 receptor site in the reticular limbic system in the brain and thus decreasing the dopamine activity because these antipsychotic what they are doing they obviously they are decreasing the dopamine activity now benzamide so under the benzamide antipsychotic drugs there is a one drug that is sulfiride sulfiride this is the iupac name of sulfiride and uh, that means it shows that it is the sulfamoyl benzamide derivative so this sulfiride is a dopamine uh, d2 receptor antagonist and uh, it is therapeutically used as a an antidepressant antipsychotic and a digestive aid also in the treatment of the schizophrenia uh, the sulfiride is a substituted benzamide derivative which is very selective for the dopamine 2 antagonist and that's why it shows the antipsychotic and antidepressant activity it is said that it is absorbed slowly from the gastrointestinal tract and that's why the viability of the sulfiride is very less from 25 to 35 and 25 to 35 it just based on the inter individual differences based on individual to individual it may from 25 to 35 percent so this is all about the antipsychotic drugs and we have covered all the category 
uh, or the or the types of antipsychotic uh, drugs like phenothiazine, butyrophenones, atypical antipsychotic, benzamides, uh, etc. So now we have done this antipsychotic. 